Hello Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about the Kodama Obsidian. Stick around! Welcome back Makers. As promised, I have the prototype V3 from Kodama Obsidian right next to me, which currently is on Kickstarter at a whopping starting price of $99. Now, this prototype unit was hand delivered to me here in Malta, surprisingly enough, by one of Kodama's employees for me to play around with and give you guys my initial thoughts on the machine. Now, I need to stress out one very, very important thing. This machine right here is a prototype. It's the prototype V3, meaning that there has already been two iterations of this, probably another two more. It'll be the V5 that will go into production. So whatever I talk about today is on this particular machine, not the final product that will come out eventually. Now the machine has a print area of 120 by 120 by 120, giving it a reasonably okay print volume. It also has a quadrap style printing mechanism. Yes, it's called a quadrap apparently, and it's exactly the same like Ultimaker uses. That also means that it's not a direct drive, but also uses a Bowden extruder. It is available in two different colors, which is Obsidian Black or this unit that I have here, which is Trooper White. There are currently three different versions available on Kickstarter. There is the $99 starter, which means you get the Obsidian 3D printer, but you do not get the LCD screen, the SD card or USB input. It'll be plain and simple on the front, which means in order to print, you have to tether it via PC or laptop. So it has to be plugged in in order for you to be able to print and control the printer. This machine right here is the $149 version, which includes an LCD uh, touchscreen display, which is Android based, SD card input and also USB. Apart from that, this particular model also supports the power resume function. So if the uh, electricity goes off, the printer will immediately stop printing. Once the electricity comes back on, the printer will simply resume where it left off. And finally, there is the Obsidian Deluxe version, which is $249, includes everything that I have mentioned so far, but it also includes a camera inside the printer so you can monitor the prints remotely. It comes with an app and also comes with a heat bed so you can pretty much print any kind of filament that your heart desires. So on to the prints and usability of this printer. Now this is touted to be a true plug and play printer and I kind of wanted to test out that theory as soon as I opened the box. I plugged it in I threw in a spool of 3D pins magenta PLA, fed it through the extruder. Uh, it has a very easy to use function to load filament on the screen. Threw in the SD card that came with the printer and I started printing this vase right here. It printed out quite nicely. It took a while to print and that is because as far as I can tell, everything that's pre-sliced on the SD card is running at 13 millimeters a second, which is fairly slow. So you can understand that print quality obviously looks beautiful at that speed. Next up on the same SD card, I threw in a 3D Benchy, which is this one right here. And it's, it turned out absolutely beautiful. It's obviously not perfect, but man, is it close. Now this actually prints with a hundred percent infill. I have no idea why it's sliced that way but it was at 100% infill. So it took about, I think about four and a half to five hours to print this Benji at 100 microns. But I have to say that it's well worth it because the print quality was quite surprising. So having printed some files that came in on the SD card, I decided I want to throw in a different filament and try to slice something myself. So I asked Kodama to send me the Kura files and I threw in all the settings in Kura and decided to um, print this toothless model right here. Now this is quite a particular one because it comes with um, pre-done supports, which are really fine. I posted a picture of it in the Obsidian group on Facebook because I wanted to see how well it coped with certain fine detail. Now this printed at 200 microns and 14 millimeters a second because that is pretty much usually the layer height that I use, which I'm most comfortable with. The model itself actually looks quite nice. It had a bit of issues with stringing. I will get to that very soon, 
But other than that, it was okay. After I posted a photo on Facebook of this toothless in vertigo gray, people started asking me, how does it cope with faster speeds? And there is no other model better suited to test the endurance of a printer and its capabilities than the Benchy. So I decided to slice the Benchy at 60 millimeters a second and 100 microns because I really wanted to see the capabilities of these printer. These three Benchies right here are failures. They're epic failures, but until they failed, the print quality wasn't actually that bad. However, I was noticing that they all failed exactly at the same spot where there are the holes of the hull. I have no idea what they're called in fisherman terms. Now that was telling me one very important thing. Those failures were related to retraction. I also noticed because during that time, the extruder was clicking very rapidly. What was happening is that there was so much retraction and extruding going on because the nozzle has to move in so many different places so quickly that the extruder just wasn't keeping up with, uh, with the print and therefore they failed exactly all three of them at the same spot. So just to test the theory, I've decided that I still want to print a Benchy at 60 millimeters a second and 100 microns. I just have to start playing around with the settings. So what I started doing is I noticed that I had set retraction speed at 25 millimeters a second and at about four millimeters in distance. Now that obviously was a bit too much for the printer. So I reduced the retraction to three millimeter and also reduced the speed to about 15 millimeters a second. And the result was this. Now, okay, there is a lot of stringing going on there, but I was looking more at the quality. What happens at 60 millimeters a second? Now, it could have done better than this, not only in terms of retraction, but also print quality. So I felt that it was due to have a bit more tweaking done to it. And then comes the last Benchy. I actually sliced this at 65 millimeters a second and 100 microns. I increased the retraction speed of the extruder to 17 millimeters a second and also increased the retraction distance to 3.8 millimeters. The results were much, much, much better. The stringing had reduced drastically, although it's still slightly present, but nothing you cannot clean up. I left it there so I could show you guys exactly what the results were. What I want to point out is that the print quality actually remained consistent. It was very good, not perfect at that speed with the retraction settings, but quite good. After that, I decided to try and create a profile on Simplify 3D based on the settings that I had from Kura and see how it fared on that. So I decided to print this Kirby by Chaos Cortec at 85 millimeters a second. Now, unfortunately, the settings weren't exactly right. And while the print came okay, you could actually see that there was retraction on the outer layer, which I really didn't want. And I decided, okay, it's I don't have enough time to stay playing around with Simplify 3D because the machine has to go back to Kodama. So I've decided to leave that as is and move on to something else. But for 85 millimeters a second, $150 printer, that's actually quite good. So finally, I decided to go back to Kura get acquainted a bit more with Kura and use some Polymaker PolyPlus PLA. Now, the first thing I did was throw in these Pegasus models by uh, Ryan, 3D printed Aspie. After playing around with some more settings, I printed this little guy right here. This was printed at 100 microns and 50 millimeters a second. Now, notice that this doesn't require that much retraction and it printed absolutely beautifully it's, it's a gorgeous print and I honestly couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. Then I decided to slide this bigger guy right here. Now this was um, sliced at 200 microns and 70 millimeters a second. It actually printed really nicely and I am really happy. There, there is some imperfections in the model, 
but nothing out of this world. So yeah, I really wasn't disappointed at all. So what do I think about this prototype? Now, keep in mind, I am talking once again about this prototype, not the final model. This is not a review of the final model because it, that still doesn't exist. These are just my thoughts on what I feel that the machine will be when it's done. And hopefully once it's ready, I will get to review that once again and show you guys all the improvements that they made since now. The machine looks absolutely beautiful. It is, for all intents and purposes, a plug and play machine. Now it's $149. I'm actually gonna speak about the $149 model because that is the one I have in front of me here. I really like the printer. I really like what it can produce. It's, it's beautiful looking, it's sleek, it's clean. The print quality is really good. If you're not in a rush, you're willing to sacrifice speed, at least on this machine, the prototype, once again, I mean, come on, that is absolutely beautiful. So I cannot fault it for that. However, there are a few things that need to be fixed. Some which Angus has already mentioned, and that is while the removable build plate helps a lot, it's quite easy to take out. You can only take it out from the back because that is where the slot is. And that needs to be moved to the front. I also have to admit that while I was printing, I did not use the spool holder, mainly because the spools I, were using, I was using were actually quite large and wouldn't fit on this. Apart from that, this particular spool size keeps coming off. And this is something I had also pointed out to Kodama when I was in LA. However, I know that they're working on a different version of the spool holder, so I made my peace with that. The extruder is possibly the one thing that requires a bit more attention from Kodama's part for the final version of this printer, because it is the one thing that was letting the printer down when printing at high speeds. Now, I don't feel that there is a lot of engineering involved or a lot of money to be spent in order to make it a better extruder. I just think that if they used better hob gears, possibly two rather than a bearing and a hob gear, just so the filament can be gripped even better, especially with those fast retractions, being a Bowden, you need a longer retraction distance to ease the pressure on the nozzle. Now, while I really like the touchscreen, it's intuitive and easy to use, I do believe that more functionality should be added with the final product. So being able to on the fly adjust the print speed, the flow rate, the temperature of the nozzle or possibly the fan speed. I think those are things that should be added there. They come on pretty much any printer. So I, I do believe that can be adjusted or included when the final version of the Obsidian is ready to, um, to, be, yeah, to be shipped out. But I believe if they do fix that, then this is a keeper. So that is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed my initial thoughts on the Kodama Obsidian. Um, once again, very important, the prototype, not the final unit. I, it's, it's very important for me to stress that because I don't want to get flamed for anything I might have said. Having said that, I'm gonna leave a link in the video description to the Kickstarter page for the Kodama Obsidian. I would also encourage you to have a look at the update section on the um, Kickstarter page because Kodama have just updated their shipping rates worldwide, making them slightly cheaper than they were following a lot of people requests. As always, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Kodama are listening to you guys. So if there is anything that you guys would like to know, let me know. If they don't reply to you, which I'm sure they will, I will get the answers for you. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, happy making guys.